Very nice to see you all. What we are going to talk about today, very quickly, is one of the three big normative ethical theories, and it's called consequentialism. As you can guess, this theory says that when we are trying to decide what to do, we should mostly or only take into account what follows from our actions. What are the results, the consequences of what we do? Hence the name consequentialism. Now, consequentialism is a view which uh, has been around in philosophy for quite a while. Um, the more recent versions have been worked out in detail and defended very closely by uh, Jeremy Bentham and a little bit later by um, John Stuart Mill. And uh, Bentham worked at the end of the 18th century and Mill worked in the 19th century. Uh, they were both uh, very active in life. Bentham was a constitutional lawyer and uh, tireless, um, tireless, real enlightenment man who was trying to use his knowledge to better the system and make it more just and fair. And Mill was very much uh, the same, and he also uh, was an MP in the parliament in Britain at the time. Um, and they were both very, very smart and good philosophers as well. Now, classic consequentialism, sometimes it's called utilitarianism, claims that rightness only depends on the consequences, and goodness only depends on the welfare produced. What does this mean? This kind of theory tries to give us some kind of general principle that we can follow when we are trying to act, and it helps us to decide how to act. And in this case, if you want to do the right action, the right action is going to be the one that brings about good results, good consequences. So the right action is going to be the one that produces a lot of welfare. What is the good according to this theory? Well, um, if you look at the classic version of the view, utilitarianism, Utility was defined in terms of happiness. And happiness was defined as the... There's a bit of difference here between Bentham and Mill. Bentham placed more emphasis on the actual experience of happiness, joy, pleasure in life. Whereas Mill emphasized more maybe a good overall quality life as happiness. There are some differences in how we understand this. And these days, usually we define um, the good in terms of welfare. Because welfare is a concept that can capture both of these notions. Uh, life, which has a high level of welfare, would probably have several moments when people are relaxed, happy, they're having fun, they're enjoying themselves, they're experiencing physical, uh, mental, emotional pleasures, and uh, it would be a life that would enable people to get these things uh, quite often, overall, in a good way. Um, now, why happiness? Why welfare? Why is this identified with the good? Uh, because, according to most consequentialists, this is the only thing that people want for itself. If you think about everything else that most people want in life, um, say money, a good job, companions, we want most of those things because they help us to be happy, uh, they help us, they enable us to have a high level of welfare in life. If you have friends, if you have a good partner, if you have a happy family, if you have a job that you enjoy, that pays you well, uh, if you live in a safe and fair society, and so on and so on, that's uh, something that, for most people, is only an instrument towards happiness, not happiness itself. So, 
what follows from this is that those actions are right, and hence those actions should be done, which maximize the good. Now, maximizing means that you might be in a situation where you can choose between action A, B, C, and D. Maybe A would overall produce a lot of harm. Maybe if you do A, uh, some people will lose their jobs. Let's say you're working in a company and you're making uh, decisions about restructuring. Uh, perhaps in the short term, it produces some gains for your company, but in the longer term, uh, the company will also become more unstable, or less competitive, uh, less socially beneficial than the company exists. And as legislators might be less in favor of it, um, maybe your other actions, A and B, could produce some good, but C is the one that produces the greatest amount of overall good if you deduct all the bad that it produces. Now, the bad would obviously be the absence of happiness, absence of welfare, or pain, suffering, uh, decreasing welfare. So you should choose the action that um, produces the highest total amount of good for all for everyone, minus the total amount of bad for all. Uh, so if this higher if total amount of good is greater than the net amount for any incompatible act available to the agent of the application, then you're going to go with that action, right? Uh, incompatible, that just means here that you can't do both B and C. If you can do both, maybe that's option B, and that leads to even more uh, positive consequences even higher increases in welfare, then you should do that. Always have to choose, you have a moral obligation basically to maximize the good, and that's why you should uh, go this way, right? You should do the right thing. Now, what is the argument? Well, these were the definitions, the definition of what is good according to consequentialism, what is consequentialism, and uh, which actions are the right actions, the ones that we should do. The argument for this has, in its simplest form, of course, you can go much deeper than this, and if you read any book on uh, consequentialism, whether it's for or against it, you will probably need more details and uh, go deeper into the arguments, but this is a very good starting point, I think. And this comes from uh, this comes from an excellent book by Michael Bruce and Steve, Stephen Van Bone. Um, it's titled Just the Arguments. It offers a lot of the core arguments and philosophy, short overviews of them, and a little bit of explanation. And uh, Phi wrote a summary of this. I base my slides on this. So the first step in your argument would be um, your pre first premise. And you could, we could call this the consequentialist theory of the right, which says that an action is right for someone to perform if and only if of the available actions, it is the action that would maximize total net good or bad in existence. Otherwise, the action is wrong. So if you're not choosing the action which produces the highest total net increase in welfare, then you're doing a wrong thing. You're not doing the right thing. Of course, if you're choosing something that uh, actively promotes decreases in welfare, unhappiness, pain, you're definitely doing the wrong thing. Um, the second premise would be, second claim on which this argument builds, is the welfare theory of the good. This claim could be unpacked as the only intrinsic good is someone's happiness, while the only intrinsic bad is someone's unhappiness. You could replace happiness, unhappiness here with welfare um, or lack of welfare, decreasing welfare. And the conclusion method follow would be then the traditional utilitarianism or traditional this version of consequentialism. Uh, that an action is right for someone to perform if and only if of the available actions, it is the action that would maximize total net happiness over unhappiness in existence. Otherwise, the action is wrong, right? So you just um, you just substitute the uh, premise two into premise one, 
I'll take a little bit more and you get this formulation and this is a very simple and powerful statement of what consequentialism is about if you think about it basically it recommends you that in every situation try and think in very neutral global terms almost how is what you're going to do affecting everyone and try to choose the action which has the best overall effect on others and you the interesting thing about this theory and one reason why it's for example very popular with many charities um, and sometimes people working for uh, global charities like uh, organizations which try to increase global welfare in some parts of the United Nations or um, you could think about Doctors Without Borders and other is that it does not distinguish whether the happiness that you bring about is your own happiness or someone else's happiness. It doesn't say that, oh, well, yeah, but you know, the happiness of the people around you, in your community, in your family, at your work, uh, the happiness of your friends is worth more than the happiness of others. It's a good thing, of course, if those people are happy, but their happiness is not more valuable than the happiness of people who lay, live, say, in Sudan or uh, Gaza or the US or Canada or China, India or anywhere else, for that matter. Um, so it's an impartial view, and that is why it's also a view that's often recommended to decision makers. Uh, one area where certain more specific, more detailed versions of this theory are applied is when governments and ministries are thinking about how to allocate money, how to, you know, uh, governments and ministries are working with a finite budget, they don't have infinite money, and they have to think about carefully how to best use the money they have for resources. So, for example, if you're thinking about, okay, this is the number of cancer treatments we can afford this year. Which part of the country has the highest number of certain kinds of cancers, the most common ones? Well, that's where most of the budget should go then, because that's where it's going to have the best overall consequence. All right, that's an introduction to consequentialism and its classical version, utilitarianism. Uh, now, of course, there's a lot more nuance because there are troubles there are counter arguments arguments that try to show that this view is not a good view of morality we should not follow this view and uh, i'll make a separate video where i'll talk a little bit about some of the counter arguments and then based on the counter arguments i'll maybe follow up with a video which explains a little bit about updated versions of consequentialism that try to avoid those problems or that try to reply to those arguments. So that's it for today. Thank you everyone for watching this short video. I hope it was helpful and it explained a little bit better and helped you to understand what consequentialism about is about, what kind of advice uh, it is trying to give to people who are trying to decide what to do and what is the argument for acting this way. Have a lovely day, keep thinking, bye-bye.